Today on City Setting, we're gonna talk about making things sweet. Hi, I'm Brian, and you're watching City Setting, and today we're gonna to talk about various ways that you can take a dry brew and make it sweeter. Now, this is a common problem. It, it's not unusual. Everybody runs into it at some point where they made something and it tastes just a little too dry and they want it sweeter. It's called back sweetening. It's not that complicated, but there are a lot of different ways to do it. Some good, some bad. There's some dangers. There's some things to watch out for. And um, I just might be slightly over caffeinated. This is coffee. Anyway, so why do we back sweeten? Really, really simple. Because something came out too dry that we don't care for it. And we'd rather it be a little bit sweeter. Most brews like ciders and meads tend to to some people taste a little bit better when they have a little bit of sweetening in them. Um, I'm not a big fan of dry wine, especially white, but I will drink dry red. So to me, a white wine could benefit from having a little bit more sugar added or sweetness added. The first easiest, and some people might say the cheater way to sweeten a brew is by the glass. Let's say you know this mead or this cider or this wine that you made is just too dry. It just went totally dry and you know it's just not what you want. You can take it from, from that bottle, pour it into a glass, add a little sugar, dissolve it in, stir it around, add sugar to your liking, kind of like you do with cocktails a lot of time, you know, and or coffee, you know, we don't put sugar in before you make the coffee, then you drink that glass. That's great if you might have several people in the household or in the gathering at that moment that all have differing levels of sweetness preference. That's a great way to basically make everybody happy. Um, it is kind of a cheat. Some people think it's it's just not the way to go, but honestly, it's the safest and easiest method. Nothing's gonna go wrong, okay? What do I mean by going wrong? Hmm. Well, if you took a bottle or a fermenter that was dry and you added more sugar to it to sweeten it up, there is a distinct possibility that you could start up a fermentation again, which if it's in a sealed bottle, could make a bottle bomb. If you're in a fermenter with an airlock, not as much of a problem, but now you have a fermentation again. Why does that happen? Let's just take, for example, bread yeast, okay? I use bread yeast in a lot of wines. It, it makes a, a fairly decent wine. It makes a fairly decent cider. Uh, you haters out there, just try it before you hate on it too much. But let's just use that as an example. Let's say it goes to about 12%. And it does, by the way. Fleischmann's, by the way goes to 12. And anyway, that's a whole other video. Let's just say the alcohol tolerance of my yeast is 12%. Now, every yeast does have an alcohol tolerance, okay? And the yeast, I like to make the joke, they don't know what it is, but those yeast were designed to work to around that tolerance. So they might be within a percentage or two of that tolerance. Say it's a 15% alcohol tolerance yeast, that means you can expect anywhere from 13 or 14 up to even 16 or 17 maybe, but somewhere in that range, okay? So don't depend on it 100%. But let's just say, going back to our bread yeast example, we made my sweet red wine, which comes out to around 11 to 12% every single time I make it. What if, I didn't put in enough sugar and it only came out to like maybe 10%, but used up all the sugars. My final gravity was like 1.000 or even below that. It's gonna taste a little dry. Now, some people may like it that way, but if you don't and you decide to sweeten it, let's say I add sugar, put more sugar in it. Well, because I didn't reach my alcohol tolerance and I'm only at like 10%, it's probably gonna reactivate that yeast because they only stopped because they ran out of sugar. Now we gave them more sugar. If you added enough sugar to make it go past 12%, that's where things get a little bit tricky. It could stop at 12, it could stop at 12 and a half, but wherever it stops is gonna be, that's kind of it, that's its stopping point. If you add more sugar at that point, it's just gonna make it sweeter. So we've done this in a couple of videos to show different techniques where you can basically just make a dry and then keep step feeding some sugar until it gets to the sweetness level you like. By the way, anybody that goes looking for those videos, we haven't done the second part to them yet. We just started the fermentations last week. But the downside to this is if you did that addition of sugar in a bottle, 
that's sealed. It could explode with the re-fermentation re starting to happen. So be very, very careful. Always put that under airlock when you're doing that. Now, if you know you've reached alcohol tolerance because there's still a little bit of sweetness left, but there's not enough, you should be okay to add sugar to that bottle. Definitely okay to add it to your fermenter. Just watch it for a couple of days, see if it starts fermenting. If it does, if it's in a bottle, I would get that under airlock as soon as possible. Just keep the pressure off of it so it doesn't explode. Now, that's the basics of back sweetening, okay? And I, when I say sugar, I mean anything that is a fermentable type of sugar. Now, the different types of sugars are white sugar, brown sugar, honey. Fruits are actually a fermentable sugar, and sometimes when you add fruit in, you can be adding some sugars in. Now, they don't add as much sugar as you might think, okay? Fruit just, it doesn't have as much sugars in there to extract out. If you grind it up to a pulp and make juice out of it, that can work too. Some people use juice, like they'll add apple juice to a cider to sweeten it up. Some people will actually use concentrated juice, like the frozen concentrates and things like that. Those are actually a great way because you're getting more sugars with less volume. Now, there's good and bad to everything, okay? If you just add white sugar, brown sugar, or honey, those are your probably your purest forms of sugar, all right? So you're adding the most sugar per little bit of amount that you're adding, thereby not diluting your brew too much, reducing your alcohol content too much. Because here's the other side. If you've reached alcohol tolerance and you add juice in and that dilutes it to below the alcohol tolerance, you could start up a fermentation again. <laughs> and then you're back in the cycle. Now you can just keep going until it's done, you know, done fermenting, add more sugars, add more whatever, and keep that cycle going. Just, you're probably gonna step feed it to a point where it's gonna go very far past its alcohol tolerance. That 12% yeast might get to 15 or 16% that way, because yeast mutates over time. They have a very short life cycle, so they can change and adapt. I know this is a lot to take in, and I know I'm talking really fast, but I thought it was a really simple topic. And then I started thinking about it, and I realized it's a very simple thing that has a million ways to fail and mess up a brew. So I'm trying to give you all the things that can go wrong and how to avoid them. Using a non-fermentable sugar is another option. I never do this, um, but a lot of people have said they do it, like Stevia, and um, there's a couple others. I, I, I don't really even really know the list of them, but the reason why they work is obvious. They're non-fermentable sugars. So no matter what your brew is at, you put these in, it can't be fermented, it just sweetens it up. I like to use real stuff. That's just the way I am. Um, so you would back sweeten a mead, a cider, a wine, all the same way, okay? There is actually another way to, uh, to back sweeten that makes it super safe, and it's still natural. And basically, even if you're not anywhere near the alcohol tolerance, you can sweeten something up. We actually did this for our ginger beer. What we want to do is brew something that has enough sugars to maybe go to like seven or eight percent, but stop it somewhere around five or six percent. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Make sure you have a hydrometer and you know how to use it. This is impossible to do without having some sort of measurement to know where you're at. Um, so what you want to do, say you make your brew to 8%, but your alcohol tolerance might be 12. So you know if it goes all the way out, it's going to go dry. That's not going to work. We want a sweet carbonated beverage, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is when that gets to about 5%, we're taking measurements, we're going to stop it. How do you stop it? We're going to take it out of the fermentation. We're going to put it in bottles and we're going to let it carbonate for a little bit, not too long. And the way to do that is you put them all together in, in the glass bottles like you're gonna do and have one plastic bottle that you put some in. That way you can test carbonation. Just give it a squeeze every couple of days. Usually four to seven days, carbonation should be good. At that point, you're going to pasteurize it. Now there's been a lot of talk about pasteurization and a lot of people seem to think you have to pasteurize everything. No, you really don't. The only reason to pasteurize a brew is to stop fermentation prematurely. Now, as far as I'm aware, pasteurization is really the only way to be able to do this accurately and quickly and effectively. Even using sorbates and sulfites, even using them in conjunction with each other, does not actually kill the yeast. It prevents them from reproducing and stops their ability to eat sugar. But you pasteurize them, they're dead. 
they're not coming back but as long as you do it properly. What a lot of people have been thinking is that they have to get it to 160 degrees. That's not true. There's a lot of different ways to pasteurize. Pasteurization can happen as low as 140 degrees. Yeah, that's what I did in the video. We started that water up to 180, then we took it off the heat. By the way, let me back that up. We put that water in a pot, we turned it up to 180 degrees. 180, okay, that's Fahrenheit. I can put a Celsius in the description here, but I can't remember. Get it to 180 degrees, then take that off the heat. Make sure it's off the heat. Then you take your bottles and put them in. Now they should be sealed. If they're not sealed, you're just gonna evaporate your alcohol and you just ruined everything you tried to do. Now these are probably carbonated. Be very, very, very sure you are using bottles made for carbonation. If you're not, they're probably going to explode. This is kind of a dangerous thing. That's why I say you should only do it if you're doing a specific thing. You shouldn't just pasteurize over it. Put them in, make sure that the water goes part way up the neck, but not all the way over the tops of the bottles. Make sure all of your liquid in the bottle is covered with water up to that level. Let them sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. The internal temperatures should get to 140. If you wanna be sure that it did, take an empty bottle, fill it with water, put it in the middle of all of those, put a thermometer in it. When the, th when the thermometer reaches 140, you know that all the liquid in all those bottles has also reached 140 degrees. Once it sits at 140 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes, guess what? Your yeast is now dead. And you have a pasteurized, sweet, carbonated beverage that you stopped fermentation on and think about all the bragging you can do to your friends. They won't have a clue what you're talking about, but that's okay. Pardon me. I wanted to make this just a short little kind of PSA type video. And I think I covered most of the different ways that you can back sweeten, except for the one major one. Now this is a biggie. Let's say you have, you know, a big batch that you made, you're still in the fermenter, but it came out dry. When you tasted it, it just wasn't where you want it to be. You can, at that point, back sweeten that. And there's several ways to do it. You can just add all your sugars, concentrates, juices, honey, whatever you want to add to it. You can add all that at once and see what happens. Take, take readings. I mean, you should be able to calculate, you know, using some of our methods about how much you're adding to it so you can know what gravity you're going to. And if you know where your yeast started out and where it should end, you can pretty much guess how sweet it's going to end up. If you don't have any of the measurements and you don't feel like doing the math, add some sugar. And when I say some, let's say you have a gallon batch and it just tastes dry to you and you have no idea what the gravity is, add half a cup of sugar. Let it sit for a week. Mix it up. Taste it in a week. Is it, is it still fermenting? Do you see bubbles coming up inside it? If it is, add some more sugar and wait a week in between. That way you can let it finish fermenting out and then you're doing what's called step feeding. And eventually you will hit a point where you've oversaturated that yeast and it's just not gonna work anymore. And bam, now you have a sweetened product. However, if you did take all the readings and you know all the math and you did all that stuff right, you can calculate exactly how much sugar you need to add, let the fermentation finish out to, to where the saturation level of the yeast is and you still come out with a sweetened beverage in the end. I hope this has helped. I can't think of anything else that I need to say to you guys. I've babbled at you for probably, oh, let's see, 14 minutes straight, but you're probably not gonna see all of that because some of this was this. And no one needs to watch me drink coffee. But I hope I helped. If you have any questions, comments, anything, leave them in the description below. I'm sorry. If you have any questions, comments, or anything that you don't understand, don't, don't, blah, blah, blah. add a comment below. I get to them as soon as I can. Or, you know, feel free to find us on the web. We have a Facebook group and you can ask in there. In the meantime, if you like this video, give it a like. If you like what we're doing, give us a subscribe. Hit that little bell icon. Get notified every time we do something. And, um, you know, have a great day. Let's say I'm using a yeast that goes to you know, 12% or 14%, but I only want my brew to be like five or six when it's done. Well, here's how you do that. You start it fermenting, you only put enough sugars to let it go to like five or 6%. Now it's gonna stop fermenting because it hit the end of that. It's very dry, right? So add, what we do then is we add just a little tiny bit of sugar and bottle it. Now we're carbonating. Now we have a dry, 
No, I did that all kinds of friggin' wrong. Go back and get rid of that. I think I already did a million cold opens. I'm gonna do it anyway. How to make things sweet.